Hey guys, good morning to you, or whatever time it happens to be when you're watching this video. Welcome to the garage. Welcome to the tube frame. In this video, if you guys remember a while back when I started designing and building this tube frame, I said when I had it at a point um, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider this a good handoff point for anybody else who wants this chassis. So here's the specifications that I have for the chassis at, at this point. Now keep in, keep in mind, um, this is just what you see here. This doesn't have any of the front suspension or the rear suspension and there will be um, significantly more triangulation or cross bracing for the shock towers and all that stuff. So there's gonna be more to this. But what you see right now and what you'll, what you'll be getting for files is the base of this chassis is made out of inch and a half by 095 DOM. Basically everything on top is inch and a half 095 ERW or electro weld because that's significantly cheaper. And a lot of the cross bracing on this chassis is made out of one inch DOM. So when you, when you add all that up, just as far as how many feet worth of tubing are in this chassis, this chassis has 204 feet of tubing into it. And that puts it at a weight approximately at 292 pounds. So if you take off the build platform that this is still sitting on, and if you just took the raw tubing of the chassis itself, what you see right here should be a little bit under 300 pounds. For me locally in Colorado, the prices that I can get for tubing, I can get Electro Weld for a buck 25 a foot, DOM for $4 a foot, or Chromoly for $8 a foot. Roughly, the prices change a little bit. So if you built this entire chassis out of the Electro Weld, it, your cost would be roughly $255. Obviously that's, that's just for the tubing. If you built the entire chassis out of DOM, it would cost you about $816. And if you built the entire chassis out of Chrome Molly, it would cost you $1,632. Um, that's for the chassis that you see right here, right now. So what this is, is this is a, a tube chassis for a Baja bug, but it is not meant for a uh, Baja body to fit over it. This chassis is too big for a Baja bug body to fit over it. What this is designed for is this will accept a Baja bug one piece front end. It'll lay right on here. It's got the proper widths. So the, the Baja bug one piece front end will fit on there and that's fine. But um, it's too wide at this point for a bug body. Obviously it's, it's way too wide with the squared off edges up, up high and all that. Um, they do make some fiberglass body panels that you could probably customize to fit in there. Um, if you continue watching my channel and my videos, I'm going to be trying to make my own um, aluminum slash fiberglass panels to give it kind of a, a cool and a custom and a one-off look and whatnot. Um, so that'll be coming up in future videos, but that was the intention of this chassis. It is too big for a Baja Bug body. It's meant to be a standalone chassis with a one piece front end. So you can do with that what you want. No matter what, I designed this from the get-go not to have doors, so you do have to step up into this chassis. I've tried to triangulate as much as I could to make to give this chassis the ability to be a very, very strong chassis. Um, that will depend on what you do with the suspension mounts and all that, but as far as the, the body port or the, the cabin chassis goes, um, I've tried to design it to be extremely, extremely strong with triangulation and whatnot. I've got uh, two types of, of drawings for you. The first type is, this was designed and built off of the BendTech software. You would need the BendTech Pro software in order to do this because it's, it's three-dimensional. Now, if you have that, I'll give you the file for this chassis. So that means if you have the BendTech software, you can take, you can take the file and you could build this exact same chassis because it's going to tell you exactly how to build it just like it did for me. It'll tell you every single part. It'll give you the, uh, you know, the lengths, the copes, everything, and that's how I built it. So if you have the Bentec software and if you want this chassis, you can have that. Uh, it's for free. I'm not charging anybody for this as of right now. 
I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I would imagine I'll always be giving these out for free, but just in case something happens and I decide to start charging for it, I just want to put a disclaimer out there that although it's free right now, there might become a day where I maybe have a website set up and, and charge you guys a little bit for this. But as I'm making this video right now, if you comment, I'll give you, if you let me know, I'll give you the, uh, the files for free. I realize that most people won't have the Bentex software and they might want, well, they might want to build the chassis. They might just want dimensions of this chassis so that if they're building a chassis of their own, they could compare some of it back and forth. For that application, I can give you guys a bitmap file. It has to be a bitmap because number one, there's not a lot of options that the Bentex software will export to. But number two, what I've done is if you're getting a bitmap, I'm going to give you a, a left hand view, a front view, and a top view. And on each of those uh, renderings, I'm just putting as many dimensions and angles on there as I can to, uh, to make it possible so that you guys could hopefully scrub enough information off of those to build the chassis. Obviously, if you're doing it that way, there's going to be some portions of it that you have to kind of uh, come up with on your own, but it would probably get you 75% of the way. But it has to be a bitmap because there's so many dimensions on there. The bitmap carries the dimensions over and will allow you to zoom in so that you can see all the dimensions. Um, so. so if you come to the front of the chassis here, I have kind of specifically designed it. I specifically designed the front of the chassis around my existing Baja bug because I'm very happy with the way that that front suspension panned out. And I, I followed a lot of those dimensions over so that it can carry the one piece front end and facilitate a arm suspension. One thing you'll want to know is the front portion here goes up at seven degrees. That's because that's the caster angle on my a arm front suspension. Now, if obviously if you get the designs for this, you know, from coming off the main part of the cab here, you can do whatever you want. You could build on something to have a beam. You could do this for whatever type of suspension you want. But what you're going to get on the, the drawing is exactly what you see right here. It's starting to get some triangulation going and it's up at seven degrees. And this front bumper is spaced out both in width and distance from the cab, like I said, to facilitate the one piece front end. Now, if we come around to the back here, there's a couple of things that I did. Number one, I'm going to be building a arm suspension. So just like the front, since I don't have my transaxle and I don't have my engine and I don't have my suspension on here yet, uh, there's, there's really not much happening back here yet. Once I set my engine and my transaxle, and once I figure out exactly what transaxle I'm going with, I might actually move these bars in or out a little bit because I want to match this to my transaxle. In the design, you can do that. All you got to do is change your connection points here and just change your connection points on the rear cage. So depending on what you've got to work with, you can take this whole piece and just space it in or out to whatever you need. If you're going to be running a arm or trailing arm, it should be able to facilitate that for your transaxle. This one right here is spaced appropriately for right now a, uh, a bus type two transaxle that may or may not change. I haven't decided yet. And an Ecotech. I do know that the Eco, the it'll fit this properly with the Ecotech. Any air cooled motor is about three or four inches shorter. So this, this will definitely fit the Volkswagen air cooled motor. As far as if you go bigger with a V6 or a V8, you may have to push some of this back a little bit. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, that wouldn't be too difficult to do. So really guys, that should be about it for this video. I just wanted to give you a little run through of the chassis and I wanted to put the, the chassis designs out there because I did tell you guys that I would do that. I've had quite a few guys ask me for them and I've kind of said, I've been saying, you know what, give me a little bit more time because I'm still evolving the chassis as I build it and I'm making changes as I go. All of those changes have been reflected in the files that I'm passing out right now to, to this chassis right here. So if you want the files, let me know in the comments and I'll give you my email address and I'll give you the files through there. Thanks for watching the video. Hit me up if you want the files and I will share them with you and 
I hope you guys are getting motivated and getting out in the garage or whatever, working on your own things and just having a good time. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care.